Caleb here in the Rosa String Workshop Shop. Today I've got a little bit of a different instrument. I've got this four string tenor guitar. Now this was brought in by a good friend of the shop, Spencer. You might have seen a few of his other instruments. One that comes to mind more recently was the Sherwood Standard. I think it's 414. Anyways, today I'm working on his four string tenor and it's got a little bit of work to be done on it. So I'm going to set it down and show you really what we got to do. Well, this tenor guitar is in here for a setup. First and foremost, you can see the strings are pretty high off the board. But you might also be able to see this board is a little warped. I'm not sure if I can show it well. It's lower on this end than it is on this end. It's closer to the body on this end of the board than it is on this end of the board. That might be something we can adjust. And then again, it might be something we have to live with. But besides the general setup and some new strings, because these ones are pretty rusty, this is also in to get a new set of tuners. A new set of tuners for this should help with tuning stability, but it's going to be a little bit of work because I think the new ones are going to be a, need a little bit bigger holes. The bigger holes are going to be a little hard to drill with, through this, this uh, front kind of veneer faceplate because it it's going to want to chip out and it's going to be real ugly if it does. So we're going to have to be real careful when we're drilling these holes. I think the first thing I'm going to do is get the strings off this and make sure everything is looking good before I go any further with it. As I was cleaning this up, I think I started to notice there might be a little bit of a divot, a low spot in the top. And that's got me a little worried about the inside. I'll take a look at it here in a minute and see if anything's loose on the inside. Because that would do that. And the pressure would push down and would end up with a low spot. It just it feels kind of like we got a low spot right in here. So once I get finished kind of cleaning this thing up a little bit, getting all the dust off and any thing that's been stuck on over the years, I start take a look in it. Start take a look at the problems this guitar might have. So I've got the mirror inside this guitar. And nothing looks loose, but I am noticing the. Uh, I guess it's a bridge plate where the bridge would sit. There's a board there, and it does look to be. Looks to me like it's the same kind of wood the top is made out of, which is some soft, probably spruce, you know, the thin grain lines, which if it is a soft wood, that might explain why we've got a little bit of divot, because typically you would want to use a hard wood. I might have Jerry take a look at this and see if he wants to do anything about it, because it's really not that bad, and I didn't notice until I started feeling it, so we may live with it. I'll ask Jerry what he wants to do. I've also got this label that came out. We're going to put it back in. There you can see the label. I'm going to glue that back in once I maybe dust a little bit. It's looking awfully dirty so I might have a little trouble getting it to stick the way it is. Well you might think by looking at my pile of parts I worked a whole bunch off camera to get it up to here but uh, this was about five minutes worth of work. <laughs> I took the neck off so we could look at the straightness of it and Jerry noticed there was some bow but he was looking at it when the fretboard was on it noticed that the fretboard was a little twisted and he you know just kind of moved it and it popped right off there was nothing to it <laughs> kind of surprised us both anyway now that it's off it'll help us fix it up a bit and it's hard to get as lucky as that come off that easy but on this fretboard we notice there's a little bit of a there's a bottom to it you can kind of see now you can really see so I just accidentally broke this little piece off but I don't think it's going to be a big deal I can glue it back in real well and the only line you'll ever see will be right in there. You'll never see it, more than likely. But 
what I'm going to do next is I'm going to clean off all this glue here. We're going to get this good and clean, raw wood to raw wood, so that when I want to glue this back, the fretboard back onto the neck, we can actually kind of put some pressure on this neck to get rid of this underbow. And when we glue this on, that'll hold that underbow out, or pull the underbow out, and it'll stay that way once this is nice and set. So I'm going to glue my little chip back in and start working on cleaning this up. Well, while I've got my fretboard glued up and clamped up, I'm starting to work on cleaning the glue off the neck portion, and I've just got my razor blade. I'm just scraping it off. You can kind of see the shinier parts where there's glue. There's still some glue in here. And the ones that aren't so shiny is obviously the raw wood. So I've still got a little ways to go on this. Just cleaning up the glue. Well, uh, since I got all the glue off the neck, I got Jerry to help me drill out these holes real careful like so we didn't mess up the front of the headstock. And you can see it turned out real clean. And I've got one of them in. They're going to have to come off again so we can get everything glued in real well. And not be in the way, but they went in or new tuners will fit. And they do fit. And they're going to look pretty good once we're ready for them. Well, this fretboard was drying overnight. So now I've taken all the clamps off and I've started using my razor blade to clean up all the glue from both. Mine blew up yesterday and the glue that held it on. This way it'll be nice and clean when we go to glue it back to the neck. Well, I'm getting ready to glue the fretboard back on. And when I do that, I'm going to try to straighten out the bow and the neck. So I've got this kind of set up over here. All right, once I get glue in between the fretboard and the neck, I'm going to set it in here. And then I'll take the clamp and clamp it in the center. And it'll push out that bow and make it straight. So that's the plan. And I think I'm just about ready to start putting glue on this thing. so much about him I'm on my knees today for I'm just a lowly pilgrim at the end of life's highway and I know that I'm not worthy of my Lord's amazing grace well this tenor guitar neck set up clamped up overnight and now that it's unclamped you can kind of see we've gotten rid of the underbow and as a matter of fact there's just a little bit of overbow which should help us once we get the tension on and it'll be pretty close to straight I think there's a little bit of glue to clean up though it's hard to get with the clamps on so I'm gonna work on making sure this is totally clean before we go on and do much else so I got the neck back on this tenor guitar. Uh, I went ahead and did a real light, and I mean real light leveling, just to make sure there weren't any high spots, and I crowned them and polished them all. So they should be in real good shape. I'm gonna get the tuners back on and the nut back on, so we can start trying to finish this thing up. Before I do that, I'm gonna oil the board while there's nothing in my way. Well, I cleaned the whole thing up with the boiled linseed oil. I did the board and I did the top and the sides. I've got the tuners on it. I think we're ready for strings. I'm going to try to get a rough idea where this bridge goes. There wasn't, it didn't really leave much of an in, indention or a mark, so I think I can just measure from the nut to the 12th and then from the 12th, and that'll give me 
a good idea. All right, we got all four strings. It's time to start working on tuning them up. Well, barring one last inspection from Jerry, this little tenor guitar is finished. It really didn't require all that much work considering how easy it fell apart. If you remember, we once we got the neck off, all Jerry did was to a little twist and this fretboard came right off. So it was just gluing it back on that we fixed the bow in the neck. And that was really all it needed besides little adjustments. Getting the neck back on and it being a bolt-on neck really allowed me to get the angle right. It's low enough that you can play it fairly easy. In case you were curious, what it's tuned to is C, which I'm going to tune it while I'm going, C, G, D, D, and A. So I'm going to play it a little bit, let you hear how it sounds. There we go. Thanks for watching, and if you leave us a thumbs up, that really help us. And if you haven't already subscribed, that help us a lot too. Thank you again.